Groceries in Canada are crazy expensive. This is $9. $7.47. <laughs> this should not cost this much. There's things that I'm willing to pay for and $3 for parsley is not it. I had similar reactions when going to the supermarket. For me, it's bell peppers. It drives me crazy how expensive these are. But first of all, are groceries in Canada really more expensive than in other countries? Other countries like the US? We'll get to that in a minute. Groceries in Canada are actually more expensive compared to most of the world. Here on this grocery index chart, the redder it gets, the more expensive. On Nambia's chart here, Canada ranks the 15th most expensive country in terms of grocery prices, after countries like Switzerland, South Korea, and yes, even the United States. But are grocery prices in Canada really cheaper than in the US? While these stats are insightful on a large scale, they may be limited because for one, we don't know which products exactly which brands go into this grocery index. And two, even though in the US groceries were slightly higher in absolute terms, but once we factor in the higher average earnings in the US and with that the higher purchasing power, it becomes easy to see why high grocery prices may be a slightly bigger burden to Canadians. A stronger indicator that grocery prices in Canada are higher than in the US are people's behaviors. Every day, around 100,000 Canadians drive into the US and over two-thirds of them return on the same day they left, among others or mostly for shopping. In 2023, Narcity compared grocery prices at Loblaws in Canada versus Target in the US. After converting the US prices to Canadian dollars, we found that the Target loaf was more than a dollar cheaper. At Loblaws, $2.79. At Target, US, $1.19, equivalent to $1.60 Canadian dollars. Chicken breasts at Loblaws, $16 or $11.42 per pound. At Target, $9.99 US, equivalent to $8.96 Canadian dollars per pound. Looking at 1% milk, at Loblaws, this cost $5.19 or $2.59 per liter. At Target, that came down to $2.10 per liter. And yes, this is of course not a comprehensive study and you can argue about which products and brands exactly are being compared here, but I still think it's quite telling. And as you know, many Canadians take advantage of this price arbitrage by shopping in the South. I live in Buffalo, New York, right on the border. Canadians come here to buy food. They say they save a lot, particularly on meat and dairy. I met one man who was buying cases of cheese, said he sold it to his neighbors. And this lady here says that she buys all her groceries across the US border and finds big savings. Brandy Dustin shows off her US grocery haul. The Rooseville, BC resident lives near the Canada-US border and says she saves about $300 a month by doing all her grocery shopping in the United States. And I'm just assuming that all of them already factored in the price of gas into this calculation. So people saving a lot by shopping across the border, although granted the savings effect may have been dampened a bit by the weakened currency. And I know I'm relying on anecdotal evidence here that groceries in the US are cheaper than in Canada because there just isn't a good enough of a study on this. Anyways, let me know in the comments if you think that I'm wrong on this, if you think that groceries in Canada are actually cheaper than in the US. And also guys, you know that money saved but not invested continues to lose value over the years because of inflation. To counter that by at least a bit, you really need to invest your money. Just in case you're looking for an investment platform that offers $0 commission trades and also no account minimum, you might want to consider Wealthsimple. I've been using Wealthsimple for over three years for part of my investments. And if you use my referral link in the descriptions down below, then both of us, you and I, will get a bonus of $25 once your account is funded. Now, let's just assume that we all agree that groceries in Canada are more expensive than in many other developed countries. I really wanted to know why. Why am I paying so much money for basic items? And I wish that there was just one single factor that could explain everything, but as with most things related to the economy, it's usually multiple factors that influence the outcome. And yes, yes, we will get to this one as well. The first few reasons why groceries in Canada are more expensive than in many other countries I would call structural problems. For one, there are geographical challenges. Canada has a much, much smaller population than the US, but spread out over a similar landmass. 
and that obviously creates challenges in the distribution of the products. Higher transportation costs, which ultimately affects the price of food, especially in more remote areas. It's expensive for companies to ship food products across a country as large as ours. And those costs are reflected in what you pay in the stores, he says. He referring to uh, Soberman, David Soberman, a professor of marketing, Rodman School of Management. And then the high living costs in Canada in general also affects the price of food. The raw materials to produce the food, like land, utilities, labor, are also very expensive. And then, of course, there are those force majeure factors, which we really can't do much about, that influence the price of groceries, such as the war in Ukraine and the recent pandemic but then again it's not really an excuse because countries all over the world are also experiencing similar effects from the pandemic it's like saying i didn't do my homework because of the solar eclipse well you're not the only one seeing the solar eclipse so and then there's also this other question if inflation in general is starting to stabilize meaning the price of goods apart from food is no longer rising as much how come that food prices are still so high here's how food prices have changed over the last couple of years. The year-over-year -year change gradually increasing from about 4% to around 10. We've all felt this at the grocery store, right? But then look at the rate of general inflation. So the year-over-year -year change in the price of everything, not just food, that's quite a lot lower. Telling us food prices have gone up disproportionately high. So that leaves us with a third reason why grocery prices in Canada are so high. Here, Soberman continues to say, but a highly concentrated grocery industry is also a big contributing factor. Canada's grocery market is dominated by just a few companies. Domestically, there are three big players. Loblaws, Sobeys, and Metro. You know, maybe you shop at one of the big three. But Loblaws owns No Frills, Real Canadian Superstore, Shoppers, Provigo, Maxi. Sobeys owns Safeway, IGA, Freshco, Foodland, Longos, Farm Boy. And Metro owns Super C, Food Basics, Adonis, Marche Richelieu. And here's the complete list for you to contemplate on while sipping your coffee or tea. There are so many brands of supermarkets that make it look as though there is a lot of competition and there are a lot of options, where in fact everything is just owned by those three companies. The next largest retailers for grocery sales are Walmart and Costco. The sad thing is that it wasn't always like this. It took a dozen of mergers and acquisitions to get to this reduced level of competition. In 1986, there used to be eight major grocery chains, all owned by different companies. But Steinberg's was sold to a and Metro, Provigo, and IGA. Then Provigo was eaten up by Loblaws. IGA went to Loblaws and Sobeys. a and was gobbled up by Metro, and Safeway was absorbed into Sobeys. During that time, you know, we did see the arrival of Walmart and Costco, but they do a lot more than just groceries. And there are many fewer of them than there are of the big three. Only about 500 stores between them compared to each of the other big chains, which have more than a thousand stores each. Can we go back to 1986? Seriously, not just because of the food prices, but also better music. Let's compare that to the US. In Canada, Loblaws and Sobeys together sell 34% of all groceries, which is even more than what the top four grocery stores in the US sell combined. Loblaws and Sobeys sell 34% of all groceries, granted a bit better than in Australia. The two largest supermarkets, Coles and Woolworths, control 59% of the grocery market. Concentration, not just in the grocery sector, but also in telecommunication, finance and entertainment has always been one of the risks in the free market. The concentration ratio in economics is a ratio that indicates the size of firms in relation to their industry as a whole. Low concentration ratio in an industry would indicate greater competition among the firms in that industry compared to one with a ratio nearing 100%, which would be evident in an industry characterized by a true monopoly. A rule of thumb is that an oligopoly exists when the top five firms in the market account for more than 60% of total market sales. So there you have it. 
competition is a very important regulating force in the free market. It can function, among others, to lower prices because companies try to offer lower prices in order to compete for their customers. Also increased quality as this is one of the ways that companies try to differentiate themselves from their competitors. All the things that we want, lower prices and higher quality. I'd love to just go to the supermarket without punching numbers into my mental calculator and fretting about the surprise bill at the cashier when I check out. So a lack of competition, or in other words, high concentration is a big problem. Further, critics argue such concentration allows the dominant companies to participate in anti-competitive practices that ultimately harm consumers through higher prices. In grocery, this takes the form of fixing bread prices, preventing competitors from selling certain products, or collectively deciding when to freeze grocery prices and when to unfreeze them. So price fixing is an illegal practice in which competitors in a sector, let's say the grocery, the food sector, agree to set prices at a certain level rather than just letting the prices be determined by the natural forces of demand and supply. And I'm not saying here that anyone has actually done this because there's just no evidence to really prove this. All that I'm saying is that the fact that there are so few competitors in the market make it very easy to do so. But yes, it has happened in some instances. For example, when Canada Bread agreed to a $50 million fine for their role in bread price fixing scandal. Company admits that under previous ownership, it worked with rivals to raise prices. The important question now is, and what is really difficult to prove is, has less competition really led to higher prices? Was that the main factor? Does little competition actually lead to higher prices? The heads of the Canadian grocery company say runaway grocery costs are the result of inflation, supply chain challenges, and supplier requests to raise prices. So not according to them. Another often quoted reason or excuse, take it as you wish, is the prevailing view that as a small but large country, we need to accept lower levels of competition to achieve a scale that is necessary to serve the various markets says Keldon Bester, executive director of the Canadian Anti-Monopoly Project. This argues that because we have a relatively small population spread out over a large area, companies entering the market need to achieve a minimum size to be efficient and sell a large enough of a volume to compensate for their distribution costs. And it kind of makes sense. And you know, this is one of the cases where you think, no, there must be another solution to this. I just don't have the data or the tools to prove it wrong. So I think that some clever dude or girl with a PhD in economics could write a paper on this so we can finally know how the math adds up. But here's what's really insightful and that makes everything clear to me. Compared to 2017, supermarkets generally make $1 to $2 more on each $100 that Canadians spend on groceries, an increase of 1-2% to 2 according to the Bureau. Now, what does this mean? Here guys, we're talking about gross margin and not sales. This means that any increase in cost in raw materials has already been taken into account. So despite rising costs and everything that is going on in the world, net-net supermarkets in Canada are making a higher percentage profit. Now don't get me wrong, I totally support and get that companies need to make profit. That is why they're in the business. In the case of tech companies or pharmaceutical companies for example, I even believe that profits have to go up year by year because they have to invest so much into research and development and there has to be enough of an incentive to invest so much up front. But supermarkets? And I know 1-2% to increase sounds so little, but 1-2% to of what? Canadians spend an estimated $110 billion on groceries each year, so a 1% increase would add about $1 billion to Canadians' food costs. So what can be done about this? I don't know, to be honest. Tell me, what do you think needs to be done? Introducing more players into the grocery sector would be a good start, don't you think? And there is plenty of room for that, as the Competition Bureau says. The fact that Canada's largest grocers have generally been able to increase these margins, however modestly, is a sign there is room for more competition in Canada's grocery industry. I, for one, would be happy to have more options and lower prices. 
In the meantime, if you want to get some ideas on how you can reduce or at least control your grocery bills, then you might want to check out this video here. And also check out my referral link for Wealth Simple in the descriptions below in case you're still looking for an investment platform. 